the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the living Jesus. Good morning everyone. We're back again to our series Living Letters and I'm so glad to bring the word of God to us. I'm trusting God to do definite works in our lives this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, living Letters um, has this foundation in bringing you to a place in which you be become the one that God will use to change and to transform your universe. God wants you to be fruitful. You saw what happened when he got to that fig tree and he found that the fig tree was not fruitful. God dealt with it. So the plan of God for your life is not for you to be unfruitful, but for you to be fruitful. That is, for you to be fruitful in every good work. And that is why he has poured out his spirit, his virtue, his favor into your life. And that's why Living Letters this morning is coming to you once again. That is, for you to be informed. An informed person will become a reformed person. A reformed person will become a transformed person. And a transformed person will transform his universe and thereby becoming fruitful, transforming others. With that in mind this morning, I believe and I pray that Lord God Almighty will change your story. And as you, and as you keep yourself faithful to God's word, your life will not remain the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. Last week we started, um, we started a series called The Five Milestones to Manifesting His Glory. The Five Milestones to Manifesting His Glory. And last week, um, we started the foundation for this 
series uh, which uh, we were made to know why you were created you were made to know that it was intentional our creation was intentional god created you for a purpose in mind god allowed you to come to this earth with a particular goal in mind and that is why you are unique in your ways that is why your life is unique and that is why you have no duplicates and uh, we were we shared with us six solid points to drive us into this this morning and i pray that as we go deep into these milestones lord whom we serve and whom we heard we do definite works in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To recap, I want us to, if you want to know the six things that God, that um, was shared with us last week as the foundation to this, I want you to go to the ministry page and go back and listen to the, to the message of last week. Today, we are going to the first milestone. And um, the text we are going to be sharing, I told us, is from 2 Kings 62, from verse 1 to 18. And I said we would not be sharing all the verses, but we will be entering into them detail by detail as we move along this pathway, along this pathway to our destination. The, every one of us have a destination on earth and after our departure from this earth. And uh, that destination is the one that God has in mind for us, to be a glorious one. He does not want us only to manifest His glory here, he also wants to move with the blaze of glory to eternity on that day when we finish our assignment on earth. And therefore, the road path we are moving on is a road path that leads to, to glory, both here on earth and in eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God and he was no more, for God took him. He walked daily with God. He manifested the glory of God. He manifested the power of God. He manifested the grace of God. He dominated. He stood firm. He, the presence of God never left him for a day. He entered into God. God entered into him. And they became one. And then he didn't know when he walked with him and left the shores of this earth. God has a plan for your life. And it shall manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the milestone? I will repeat that. A milestone literally refers to a roadside marker that leads the distance to a particular location or destination. It leads, it literally refers to a roadside marker that leads the distance to a particular location or destination. It is a roadside marker that leads the distance to a particular location or destination, which means that on each milestone, you will be told what you have covered your achievement, where you are, and how far it's left for you to reach that destination. Praise the name of the Lord. But one particular definition strikes me is a milestone is a significant event in your life. Often a milestone marks the start of a new chapter. God will open a new chapter in your life this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I say God will open a new chapter in your life this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone under the auction of my voice, I stand here as a, as a mouthpiece of God, as a servant of God, as a oracle of God, declaring the word of God to you. I say a new chapter will be opened in the page of your life to Day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Second Kings chapter two verse one, uh, verse one to, to verse one to two says, uh, "It um it, now the day has come in which God was about to take Elijah away, Elijah away through a whirlwind." Uh, and the Bible said, "And he was verse two says he was with Elisha at Gilgal, and they were about to step out from Gilgal. Gilgal." Today we are dealing with the Gilga experience, uh, the Gilga milestone experience. Uh, what does it mean? What does Gilga mean? What does it mean? What is the significance of Gilga in our life? Gilga means to roll away. Gilga means to roll away. Gilga means to roll away. It's amazing that that was the only place that this, that that Elijah was with him voluntarily. That was the only place that Elijah was with Elisha together. Let me tell you this. Gilgal is a place where help is given you. 
Gilgal is a place where God comes to your head. Gilgal is a place where God has to deal with situations in your life that is beyond you. And I decree and declare to you this morning that whatever situation is in your life that has been, been that is beyond you, God this morning will take them away in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Gilgal means to roll away. Gilgal is a place where God himself fights on your behalf. Gilgal is a place where God himself will do things that will set you free. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 verse 32, it said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Wow, you will think that, okay, if I know the word of God, it will set me free. Yes, but much than that, in verse 36, it says, even the son has made free. Even the son has made free shall be free indeed. God will free you from everything that has been holding you back in the name of Jesus Christ. What is this thing that he says to roll away? I will give you two examples in the scriptures and we will go, we will zero in because we are still going to pray a lot this morning. The first one happened in the book of John chapter 11. It happened in the book of John chapter 11 when when, 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 when Lazarus died, and Lazarus was buried in the in the tomb, and a stone once you are once you are dead, a stone is rolled away. A stone is rolled to cover that place. That way, nobody can remove it. When Jesus Christ came to the scene, he was confident that Lazarus was sleeping. He said, "Lazarus." He said he was confident Lazarus was sleeping. He was confident that Lazarus was going to come back to life. Whatever has been dead in your life this morning will come back to life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I receive a mandate from God this morning. Today is different. We are studying, but at the same time, we are getting to the truth. And God wants to do deliverance work in this place. Uh, God wants to break yokes. Uh, God wants to set the captive free. God wants to deliver you from lingering issues. Uh, God wants to destroy every evil foundation in your life. And I say today it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord said roll away the soul. He said Lazarus come forth. When he said Lazarus come forth the Bible says and he said take away the soul. And they have to roll away the stone. Whatever has hemmed you in. Whatever has hemmed in your glory. Whatever has hemmed in your life. Whatever has hemmed in hemmed you in that has prevented you from manifesting. I said this morning it shall be rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to me, do not say it shall be rolled away. He said decree and I decree that whatever has hemmed you in, I command it to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. When they say they put a stone, it's to, it's, to, it's to seal it and never allow you to come out. Whatever has sealed you in, it could be generational. It could be certain things in your bloodline that has been a recurring decimal. I've had people say that, look, uh, I said I was sharing with a beloved sister. I said, in a particular family, all the women in that place had to marry twice. That is not right. That is not of God. In some places, uh, they die young. In some places, they start well. They get to the middle of their life. Uh, and about two hours when they are supposed to be going on in, from glory to glory, so, something suddenly happens to them and they are no more. Or they, or they just come down into poverty, into oblivion. Nobody remembers them again. They are not right. Uh, whatever it is in your life, it could be a terminal sequence uh, that is noted uh, in your family lineage. Uh, to this morning, God puts a stop to it in the name of Jesus Christ. I said today you are free from torture in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Roll away the stone. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I call forth your health this morning. I call forth your glory this morning. I call forth your opportunity this morning. I call forth your blessing this morning. I said, Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. No more will you lie in the shadows of other people. No more will you live in obscurity. You are meant to manifest. And I command in the name of Jesus, come out from that darkness. Come out from that affliction. Come out from that death situation. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. It's that come forth. And the Bible recorded in verse 44. It says, it says, it says that, and he that was bound with grave clothes. You know what they do? 
when the shield that they say we have finished that person. Sometimes they will say we have finished you. They say we have finished you. He said dead meat. He said his story is forgotten. Leave him. We have sorted him out. Which means that you have already covered with a grave cloth. Whatever grave cloth which depicts deadness, deadness. It could be a job loss. It could be it could be a sickness that they have said that there is no there is no remedy. That they have been marking time for you. Today I cause a reversal to come in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause a reversal to come uh, to that thing that is showing that people have concluded over you. To that thing, that, to, to that situation in your life that people have given up on you. I say today, today there is a reversal coming out of your life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every great closer uh, that has bound your glory, that has bound your destiny, that has bound your health, that has bound your financial, that has bound your career, that has bound your manifestation. I command the fire of God to consume it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said his face was bound about with a napkin. Now, if your face is, your face is what they call the glory. You will always see in the Bible, they say that the glory of God, they say in the face of Jesus, they say we are seen as long faith, face as the mirror, behold the glory of God, we have been transferred from the one level of glory to another level of glory. So your face is so important. Your face is what attracts people to you. Your face spiritually is what is close with the favor of God. And so when that face is close with the napkin, it shows that you are no longer an, uh, 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 a subject of favor. You are no longer a subject of visitation. The Bible says uh, now that then that you are forsaken, Isaiah chapter 6, uh, that no man went through you. But from today, I decree and declare that you become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. No more will you be tapped for second. No more will favor belong, belong from you. I say from today, people seek for you. Nations that you do not know of, they jostle for your attention. They seek for you. Men and women of substance, they begin to look out for you. Today, that which is the key that has put in your life for you to manifest, begins to draw attraction in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Gilga, you will wonder, what, what, in what place, why, how come Gilgal is an important place? Let us go to the book of James, John, Joshua, chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 8. After the circumcision was completed, the whole nation stayed in the camp until the wounds had healed. Verse 9. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed from you the disgrace of being slaves in Egypt. That is why the place was named Gilgal. The name it still has till today. Now, the King James Version says, Today, God said to them, Today, have I run away the reproach of Egypt. What is Egypt? What is the reproach? You can see one of the meaning of that reproach is shame, disgrace. I said to you this morning, the shame of Egypt. Egypt is a place of tutelage, it's a place of, 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 of toil, it's a place of slavery. Some of you are slaves to habits. Some of you, you are slaves to, 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 to some certain situation in your life that has kept you hemmed in. That you are toiling. Today, we put a stop to every toil in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He said, the Egyptians which you see today, you will see them no more. Who are the Egyptians? The taskmasters. What does it mean to be under a taskmaster? That is someone that is afflicting you. Demons afflicting you. You are in bondage. But today, that affliction is terminated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Toiling is terminated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, laborious lifestyle in which you have nothing to show for, is terminated in your life this morning. I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not speaking of myself. God has put his signature on this meeting this morning. I said that thing uh, will cause you to toil uh, without gain, uh, in pain. Uh, is terminated in your life this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, today God rolls away the 
the, 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 the pain. God runs away. The saga. God runs away. Your slavery in Egypt. Everything that has helped you in. That has hold you down. That has put you into bondage. Is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the Bible says. By the reason of the anointing. Isaiah 10 27. The body shall be taken off your shoulder. And the yoke destroyed. Every evil body, every body on or every body on your shoulder that has slowed down your pace in life, that is making you to struggle, is taken off from your shoulder this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, the yoke over your life. When they put a yoke over somebody, which means your life is controlled, manipulation, which craft manipulation over your life is terminated this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. what does Gilgal represent? Reproach represent number one. It represents shame. But today, Psalm 78, verse 66, he said, He smote them and beat the smote, he smote his enemies and put them to everlasting reproach. The, new, the, 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 the NIV says, He beat back his enemies and put them to everlasting shame. Like I told you this morning, the battle is not yours. I am representing the Lord God Almighty. I am his mouthpiece to you this morning. God said, I should tell you. This money, this money, it is causing a reversal of your shame in the name of Jesus Christ. It will beat back the enemies that have caused you to be in shame this morning. This money will terminate the appointment over your life, will terminate their oppression over your life. Say no more shame. Say no more shame. I say, say no more shame. This is my time. From my shame, I receive fame. From my shame, and I receive double number. Oh no, say that right now. And the heaven shields it in your life. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ, huh? God will turn around a reversal. You are the one that was in shame. You will no longer be confounded. Huh? You will no longer be put to shame. Huh? Instead of you being put to shame, your element huh, shall receive that. It is reversed. Their evil return to their head. Huh? And they shall be the ones that shall be. That will begin to be in everlasting shame. From this money, in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible says, "If that they get a pitch, shall fall into it. And if they roll a so the roll stones shall be rolled back onto them. So it is a boomerang, that which was sent to you. The shame that was sent to you, as we turn back to those descendants, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. For your shame, you receive double honor. For your shame, you receive fame. God said to Abraham, Genesis 12, two, he said, I will make your name greater. And therefore, in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, from verse 17, he said, and I will give you a name. So for your shame, you receive a name among the great, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, you come to prominence, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing that happened when you fall into reproach is disgrace. Proverbs 18, verse 3. And life says, with shame comes disgrace. The King James Version says, with shame comes dishonor. Now you are going to pray. Lord, this money, Lord, you have said you are here to deliver me. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray like this. This money, Lord, you have you've said you are here to deliver me. Turn my shame, turn my disgrace, oh Lord God Almighty, turn my disgrace, sir. turn my disgrace to grace. Turn my disgrace, O oh Lord God. Remove every disgrace from my life. Turn my disgrace and run. Now listen, before you begin to pray it, I want us to understand further how you are going to pray. Jeremiah 31 verse 19. He said, I have, I have strayed. Yes, you could have fallen to the end. But say, can the lawful captives go free? Can the priest be delivered from the mighty? Yes, you could have strayed to become a lawful captive. You could have strayed to become the priest. It says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19, after I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breast. That is, I was like in anguish. I repented. I said, oh Lord, how did I put myself into this? How did I find myself to come under bondage like this? How did I fall into the hand of the enemy like this? How did I become the prey of the mighty? Lord God Almighty, I repent. And if you have done that, if you are the one that has caused yourself to fall, a victim to this, I want you to repent right now. I call it to this scripture. He said, and I was ashamed and humiliated. You know, because when you fall into the hands of the enemy, when you fall into the hands of the mighty, you become ashamed and humiliated. 
it brings humiliation to one's life. Is that because I bore the disgrace of my youth? You are going to pray. Remember the scripture says in Isaiah 54, it said, you shall no longer carry the disgrace of your youth. So you are going to pray to God this morning. Yes, Lord. I, I strayed and I got capt and I got captured and I became a victim of, of the magic. I became a lawful captive. But this morning, I have repented and therefore, Lord, remove every shame of my youth. Listen carefully. When I was preparing for the service, the Lord said to me, there is somebody under the auction of my voice. You committed an abortion, a secret abortion. Nobody knew about that. Your husband did not know about it. And it has prevented you from, from, from conceiving. God said, and I'll be calling to God. I said, Lord, please. I, I, be, I regret what happened. I, I, I did it in ignorance. But God said, I have compassion upon you this body. The Lord of heaven has compassion upon you this body. And he has rolled away that reproach of barrenness in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer be buried from today. You will conceive because the Lord has forgiven you and has rolled away that reproach of barrenness. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Lord said, I should tell you. This money, that reproach is rolled away. Listen carefully. Every shame that you have been bearing in your youth, some things have disgraced public shame. The Bible says, a uh, 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 condensed version said that ignominy, ignominy means public shame. Whatever you have carried that has made you to bow your head in disgrace, you are going to pray this morning, Lord. You are God and you can do all things. You have promised me. You said this money is my money. Lord, you said it's my child. Lord, remove every disgrace from my life. Turn it around, O oh Lord. Bring, it, bring me to the place of honor. In the name of Jesus, I lift up your voice to pray. Lift up your voice to pray. Turn my disgrace to grace. Turn my disgrace to honor. God said, you will no longer bear the disgrace of your youth. You will no longer bear the disgrace of your youth. Slay all the that scripture. I said, Lord, this morning, tear that, that garment of disgrace for me. Lord, reverse it. Let me be able to lift up my head in the society once again. Let me, the Bible says, is the glory and the lifter up of your head. Lift up your voice to him. He is here in your midst. Turn my disgrace to grace. Change my story this morning. Lord, no more disgrace. You have said you are here to remove disgrace from my life. He is God. He is God. He is God. He said, you will no longer carry the shame of your youth. You will no longer carry the disgrace of your youth. So call upon him. The Bible says, as many as call upon him shall be saved. You will not know that which has brought you to that place where you have been disgraced. Some years ago, somebody in this place, almost 10 years ago, you failed, you faced a disgrace because of what happened to you. But God said, today, I have cancelled it out. You're the same person that people revile. You're the same person that people disdain. You're the same person that people, that people talk about you with disgust. From today, they shall come to celebrate with you. From today, they will celebrate with you. From today, they will come to celebrate your name. From today, they begin to say good things about you. For God has reversed that situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name you have prayed. So I declare and declare that that disgrace is reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, people will come to honor you. From today, people will begin to speak good concerning you. From today, people will begin to discount, to discount that disgrace, that, 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 that bad thing that happened in your life. They will discount it and say, ah, it could happen to anybody. That guy is a good person. That woman is a good person. Can't you see? He deserves this. He deserves that. In fact, they begin to say good things about you. They begin to see your virtues. And today, God brings all this to fall in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, what does it mean to suffer reproach? Reproach means ridicule. Counting. Psalm 42 and verse 10. It says, my bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me. King James Fashion says, as my foes reproach, reproach me. Saying to me all day long, where is your God? Have you been, have you been in that situation this morning? That your situation... Without people pointing hands, 
from their look, from their countenance, from their disposition towards you. They are saying, where is your God? You are going to lift up your voice this morning and say, Lord, people are asking. This situation is already asking questions from me. Satan is asking questions. He's taunting me. People are beginning to say, he goes to church every day. He prays like never before. He calls himself, he calls herself a Christian. Yet, nothing good has been seen. That situation is still there. Can't you see? He had better go and do something else. Where is your God? And some people are beginning to say, he must have done this, he must have done that, she must have done this, she must have done that. And then they're beginning to revalue. They're beginning to ridicule you. What in peg? Eh? You are going to call to God this morning, Lord. Today, turn around this situation for me. Let people stop saying, where is my God? Turn back my foes. Turn back. Put them to shame. Lift up your voice to pray. Oh, Lord God Almighty. No more ridicule in your life. This situation that has brought ridicule to you. That is making your enemies to begin to ask you, where is your God? They said, we have got rid of him. We have got rid of her. Can't you see Oti Tofu? Eh? Oti Tofu. And, he calls, and she calls herself a Christian. He calls himself a Christian. Where is your God? Look at him. He said no more. Eh, I will not compromise. Eh, I will not just say, I need to go to down. We said you should go and you should go and you should go and, you should, you should go to the bypass. You should go and use use cunning. Eh? You should go and seek help in Egypt. And he's not listening. Yet his situation is not changing. Our situation is not changing. God, God Almighty, will you allow this to continue? Lord, will you not reverse this situation? Remember the case of Anna. Anna went to Shiloh every year. And this particular Shiloh, she cried to God. But Nina was taunting her, carrying her own children to mock her. And she said, Lord, today, if only you will turn around this condition of mine and stop making me a subject of ridicule, I will give it back to you. Make a covenant this money with the Lord. Tell God that you will use it for your glory. This situation, you will testify and bring many. This, this situation, if it is reversed, and you have what you have been longing for. Ah, Lord, I will use it for your glory. Talk to the Lord this morning. Oh, talk to the Lord this morning. There is a grace in this care, in this atmosphere this morning. There is a power of God in this atmosphere this morning. There is an anointing in this atmosphere this morning. Your answer is, 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 is bound to come. This money that is going to be a change, a new chapter is being opened in your life. Oh, cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Anna cried to God. And he said, God, if only you do this. No more. I don't want to let do, I don't want to make a statement. But I want you to make it a statement for you to be glorified in my life. I will give it to you. I will give it back to you to use for your glory. Pray that prayer right now. Pray it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now listen. Now listen and receive this. Micah 7 9. He says, I will bear indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. You are going to pray again. Lord, plead my cause this morning. Execute judgment on my behalf. In the name of Jesus, I lift up your voice to pray. Lord, plead my cause this morning and execute judgment on my behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, plead my cause this morning. Execute judgment on my behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord, plead my cause up. Execute judgment on my behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now hear the voice of the Lord. 
The Lord said, I should tell you, I have taken away your judgment this morning. I have taken away your accusations this morning. I have taken away your afflictions this morning. Share the Lord. And I have cast out your enemy. Share the Lord. The King of Israel. Even the Lord. Oh Lord, who is in the midst of you. Thou shalt no longer see this evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say you shall no longer see this evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord said, I should tell you. He said, now shall your enemy see it. And they shall be put to shame. Your enemy shall be covered in shame that said unto you, Where is the Lord thy God? Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, give, him, give him praise now. Give him praise now. God has executed a judgment on your behalf. Today, a new chapter has been opened in your life. <laughs> a chapter of liberty. A chapter of freedom. A chapter of deliverance from generational causes. From generational bloodline issues, from bondage, uh -huh, from lack, uh -huh, from lost opportunity, from diversion of glory, from your taskmasters, uh, from demonic oppression, from terror, uh -huh, from being a slave to fear. Today, God has set you free and declared your freedom. No longer will this affliction rise again. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. In Jesus name. It is settled. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have been blessed this morning. I want you to shout a big hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. We are still on Gilgal. Next week. I'm going to take us to the two other things that happen at Gilgal. That is the, that is the circumcision. Of the earth. And also. That is the season of manna. I will explain all this to you and God will open your eyes and take you to the next phase, to the glory, from glory to glory. On Friday, we shall be having the vigil. I want you to be there because I know God will do you good in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are here this morning, under the auction of my voice, you are yet to give your life to Christ. Yes, God will first take care of that, roll away your reproach, but he's calling you for, for you to have a lasting victory, for you to move to the next phase. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to accept him into your life. So I will pray this prayer with me. Lord, I acknowledge my sin. And I ask that your blood will cleanse me from every unrighteousness. And I ask right now that you come into my life to become my God, to become my master, to, to become the ruler of my life. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for doing this. I am born again now. You said if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away, beyond all things have become new. Thank God I'm a new creation. And all things have become new. The reproach of Egypt is gone. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. I believe there will be great testimonies to, between today and Friday. The ministry page is there. We have a place you can drop your testimonies. Don't call me alone. Share that testimony with people. Let them also be blessed. God bless you. As you step out today, you step out into glory. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 1, to say light suddenly arises out of darkness for the righteous. As you step out today, you step out into the light of God. You step out to the glory of God. Your sun shall no longer go down. Kings come to the brightness of your rising. Uh, as you step out today, people, nations will just show to seek for you. People will just show to seek for your signature. They will just show to seek your attention. They will just show to, to place value on your life. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. And go forth singing with joy. In Jesus' name.